Going? It's going good. Hi, Kunal. Nice to see you. And how's KubeCon treating you? Excited for KubeCon? Yeah, this is day two. While well, it's opening tomorrow, I heard it's going to be like a, a mad rush of people here. 9,000 people, one of the biggest KubeCons. Yeah, so excited. So we're here at the Avisha booth. We're going to talk about multi-cloud, multi-cluster. You know, I work at CEO, which is a cloud native service provider. Mm -hmm. And folks are, you know, the market is being, let's say, dominated by the big three. And uh, we're like, okay, try to try to approach with a more multi-cloud standard yeah. because you no know, cloud is like 100%. You know, they, no one has a 100% uptime. Yeah. Today, I think WhatsApp went down for 30 minutes. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, we were, I was talking about, you know, and also seeing this uh, trend uh, for multi-cloud uh, sort of uh, like infrastructure based uh, yeah. services people are using and also multiple services that people are using, if not multi-cloud. So can you tell us a little bit more about like from your experience, what are some of the benefits of using a multi-cloud approach for companies? Yeah, so we've been uh, seeing various use cases. So uh, a recent one that I was uh, a part of the conversation where a company had acquired, so they were in GCP and they acquired an AWS uh, system and those two were siloed. So how do the AWS system talk to something in GCP? How do the workloads you know, communicate with each other? So that's where one of the use cases where uh, CubeSlice comes in. And then, you know, when I think of multi-clouds, it's also the hybrid cloud scenario, yeah. right? Where you have um, a workload in, um, in the data center that needs to communicate with something in, in uh, a hyperscaler cloud. Hmm. And how do you make, make that connectivity easy, seamless? And uh, that's something that we facilitate with our CubeSlice workspace. Yeah, and how does that usually work? Like, how do you make sure that multi-cloud, like when you have multiple, like, cloud platforms, that they're able to, let's say, communicate with each other and then there's yes. no this barrier? Right. So what we do with CubeSlice is we create this virtual workspace um, that's on any Kubernetes platform. And um, you can bring in the, the namespaces for the applications onto that CubeSlice and you make them discoverable. And on that slice, so whether they're on GCP, whether they're on, you're just registering those clusters onto the slice and they immediately become discoverable to each other. So we take care of all the, uh, you know, kind of making the, the whole network um, invisible to so the it's applications. Like you're providing the abstraction for yeah, them. Yeah, we provide that abstraction. Nice. And we make it very simple. We literally say that you can get your applications across these clouds to talk to each other in two minutes. You can set it up. Mm. And uh, which is pretty remarkable if you think about it. And uh, then you can set also, um, so, so think about if you have several teams. And uh, so whether you're in a single cluster, which I know we're not, we're talking about multi-cloud now, but if you're in a, in a single cloud and if you have several teams, or if you have to extend those workspaces to several clusters, uh, multi-cluster across regions or in a different cloud, how do you extend uh, those Kubernetes attributes, those RBAC or the resources that you have for one particular set of stack of applications to a different cloud and a different, uh, you know, uh, uh, set of applications? But the extensibility uh, is uh, is uh, something that that seamless extensibility is something that we uh, facilitate. With, yeah. Uh, Are those like the main challenges that you're trying to solve? Uh, what you do, the, what does the community say? Yeah, so uh, so three challenges really. So one is that service to service discoverability across clouds. One is how do you uh, extend those different attributes like from RBAC to resources to policies? How do you extend that from one cluster to multiple cluster, whether it's across clouds or you know maybe within the same cloud? And then the third, I would say, is how do you bring in that isolation? When you have several teams, um, each of them needs to have its own set of resources, its own set of um, you know, users um, that can access those resources. So how do you bring in that isolation and then again extend it to a multi-cloud environment? Uh, so where we enable uh, the users to create those several slices or those several mm -hmm. workspaces and uh, very easily again extend them so that extensibility is something that is a very strong feature of our cube size platform so the slice is basically the abstraction that you're providing 
and then uh, now it doesn't matter which cloud you're using because you can just extend it. Yes. Like all the roles and all the objects, services or whatever. Yeah, the yeah. roles, the objects, the resources, the CPU, the memory, yeah. the... That's nice. Yeah. And uh, what does Kubeslice has to offer at KubeCon? Like, what are you looking forward to? Um, yeah, so what can folks come? like I said, it's it's one of the largest KubeCons. There are 9,000 attendees. We are, you know, calling people to the booth. SU46, we want to be able to demo. Uh, we have some cool demos to show. Uh, how do you do multi-cloud? How do you do multi-cluster? Um, and uh, yeah, hope to take this. We also have the uh, our open source, kubeslice.io, and we have our our GitHub project, uh, as much as as many developers as we can get on this platform, uh, you know, it will just spreading the word. Amazing. So you want to learn about multi-cloud? You have any questions? If you're facing these challenges and you want to get answers, 